Which is the right major for you, industrial or chemical engineering? This is what we will be talking about today. But before we get started, please be sure to smash the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that are going to lead you to success. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to what our passion is, but a lot of the times you might not know what that is as a high school or college student. So it's important to fully understand all the implications that come with choosing a specific major. Both industrial and chemical engineering are two popular undergraduate programs that appear to have a lot in common and look attractive on paper. But let's dive deeper into the curriculum, job outlook, salary, and prestige to see if these majors are really worth pursuing so you can make an educated decision for yourself and not have any regrets about dropping 100 grand on a wrong degree after college. Let's start off with an easy question. If you've taken chemistry, physics, and biology class in high school, Try to remember if you enjoy chemistry and biology, specifically related to the structure and reactivity of molecules, different types of reactions, as well as all of the different labs that you did like pH measurement, chromatography, and spectroscopy. If your answer is yes, then it's a good sign that chemical engineering might be for you. Now, if you hated the biology and chemistry, but math like statistics and calculus is more of your thing and improving a business or manufacturing process to save time, money, and materials sounds cool, then industrial engineering is likely a better choice. Again, this is just a very preliminary evaluation to at least point you in the right direction of either industrial or chemical engineering respectively. Now, in order to determine whether industrial or chemical engineering is a better fit for you, we must first know exactly what these two things are. So what the hell is industrial engineering? It's a specialized discipline that involves predicting, evaluating, and optimizing any process or system such as a manufacturing line, a supply chain network, or even the layout of an emergency room floor at a hospital using math, engineering analysis, and design principles. Industrial engineers are essential to making any complex process involving people, money, knowledge, information, and equipment more efficient such that an organization can maximize profit or minimize costs. As an industrial engineer, you will be able to work in a wide array of industries including but not limited to aerospace, automotive, food, medical, consumer electronics, defense, finance, and manufacturing. Now moving on to chemical engineering. What in the world is that? It's a specialized discipline encompassing the translation of molecular information into the creation and manufacturing of new processes and products such as plastics, dyes, drugs, fertilizers, petrochemicals, food, and even the development of clean energy sources. As a chemical engineer, it all starts with their foundational knowledge in chemistry, biology, physics, and math to create innovative solutions to important industrial and societal problems in a plethora of industries, including healthcare, energy, environmental, electronics, advanced materials, biotechnology, construction, food, defense, and chemical process. Now that you have a high level understanding of both industrial and chemical engineering, how does the curriculum for these two majors stack up against each other? As you probably can guess, both industrial and chemical engineers take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year, like math, which includes calculus one and two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, linear algebra, physics one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism, as well as basic chemistry. Moving on to the common engineering courses between these two majors, you will have to take programming with a common language such as MATLAB or C++ for solving engineering problems and an introductory design course intended to build a problem solving mindset, computer skills, and familiarity with the elements of engineering design. From this point on, the courses between these two majors will begin to diverge and become more specialized. So as an industrial engineering major, you will have to take a lot of classes with math, operations, and human factors as the focus. In the second year, you will have to take courses like economic decision making, introducing the relationship between time and money, business operations, financial valuation, cash flow analysis, and accounting principles. You'll also take operations modeling that will teach you how to mathematically model decisions with varying levels of uncertainty and solve these models using optimization, statistical models, and queuing processes. We also have human factors and ergonomics class, introducing how to evaluate and design a product, process, or system to work 
more efficiently with humans and improve the overall user experience. For example, this class will come in handy if you were asked to improve the efficiency of a manufacturing line as an industrial engineer. Some questions you might need to answer include how much space do you want to give between assemblers, where do you want to place the arbor press or SMT machine in relation to the worker, and where you want to include windows in the factory. This class will present problems involving computer displays, illumination, eye-hand coordination, as well as repetitive and high physical effort tasks. Moving on to junior year, you have to take some type of optimization and computation computational methods class emphasizing decision making for real world applications from transportation, healthcare, and other industrial domains using optimization models, computational algorithms, and programming. Next is intro to Markov processes, which in layman terms is a way to describe and predict a real world process such as a manufacturing line or traffic jam using math such as statistics and calculus. It's actually a very useful course that is used to solve common challenges faced by many businesses relating to reliability maintenance, inventory, production, and queues. You should also expect to take a data analytics tools and techniques course teaching how to clean, manipulate, and prepare data for visualization as well as basic inferential statistical analysis and predictive analytics using Python. Finally, as a senior, there will almost always be some type of advanced simulation class covering complex discrete event systems with applications in industrial and service organizations. Topics include modeling and programming simulations using a high level computer package such as pro model or gpssh like every engineering major there will be a final senior design course where you work on a semester long design project in industrial and operations engineering with a team that's generally sponsored by a company so as a chemical engineering major you will have to take a lot of chemistry related courses surprise surprise my in addition to general chemistry, you'll have to take one or two organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry courses, as well as a general biochemistry course. Also expect to take a basic thermodynamics class introducing state variables, work, heat, entropy, and free energy, as well as a chemical and biological engineering thermodynamics class focusing on thermodynamics of multi-component, multi-phase chemical and biological systems. You probably already know that chemical engineering is very hands-on, so you will for sure be taking a project-based class where you work in teams on a project and applied chemical engineering research suggested by local industry. For example, if your team was interested in polymer science, a potential project idea could be characterizing the physical properties of natural and silicone rubber. More advanced courses that you would take as a junior and senior include separation processes, chemical kinetics and reactor design, and integrated chemical engineering that presents and solves chemical engineering problems in an industrial context such as process design and dynamics. So to recap, the curriculum for both industrial and chemical engineering is equally challenging. Now we see there is some overlap between industrial and chemical engineering in terms of the curriculum, both of which focus on process design and improvement. However, chemical engineering is more specialized and deals specifically with chemical processes, while industrial engineering is more general and encompasses all types of processes, whether that's related to manufacturing, logistics, or business. So the question to ask yourself is, are you more interested in working in a lab or plant to develop and optimize chemical manufacturing processes using chemistry, biology, math, and physics to develop everyday products, fuels, drugs, and food? Or are you more interested in the design and continuous improvement of a variety of processes and workflows related to manufacturing, business, and management in a traditional factory environment or even in an office on Wall Street. So now that we have a good sense of the curriculum, let's compare the annual salaries of both industrial and chemical engineers and see what the current and future job outlook looks like for these two types of engineers. Let's begin with the salary breakdown for industrial engineers. We see that the median salary is $95,300, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $60,850 and $129,620 respectively. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location would contribute to this salary gap, so someone with 10 plus years experience working in California will probably be amongst the top 5% of earners. The number of jobs in 2020 was 292,200, and it's expected to see an eye-opening 4 14% increase in jobs between 2020 and 2030, which is way above average compared to the overall engineering field. Now moving on to the salary for chemical engineers. 
we see that the median salary is $108,540, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $68,430 and $168,960 respectively. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location will contribute to this salary gap. So someone with 10 plus years experience working in California will probably be amongst the top 5% of earners. The number of jobs in 2020 was 26,300 and it's expected to see a 9% increase in jobs between the years 2020 and 2030, which is above average compared to the overall field of engineering. So we see that chemical engineers on average make slightly more than industrial engineers, but the number of available jobs and job growth rate of industrial engineering blows chemical engineering out of the water. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. Now the way I've defined prestige is how well known is the company you work at, and I assume that the larger the company, the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. Consequently, I have evaluated prestige solely based on the number of top 100 Fortune 500 companies that offer industrial and mechanical engineering jobs. It came down to the wire and here are the results. By contrast, 54 out of the 100 companies offered industrial engineering jobs, including Walmart, Amazon, Apple, CVS Health, United Health Group, McKesson, Amerisource Bergen, Kroger, Ford, GM, Chevron, Target, Citigroup, Meta, UPS, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, FedEx, Philips 66, Lockheed Martin, Disney, Archer Daniels Midland, Albertsons, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Cisco, Morgan Stanley, HCA Healthcare, Cisco, Charter Communications, Merck, Public Supermarkets, Allstate, Tyson Foods, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Oracle, American Express, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. By contrast, 35 out of the 100 companies offer chemical engineering jobs, including Apple, ExxonMobil, Ford, GM, Chevron, Dell, Marathon, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, Philips 66, Lockheed Martin, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Merck, Tyson, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Energy Transfer, Dow, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. So the amount of prestige that comes with industrial engineering is exceptional, and for chemical engineering, it's also good. There will be lots of opportunities to land a job at a big name company for both disciplines. All right, summarizing everything we talked about. The curriculum for industrial and chemical engineering are neck and neck in terms of difficulty. What's common between industrial engineering and chemical engineering is the math, physics, and engineering problem solving mindset. While industrial engineering classes focus on equipping students with knowledge rooted in math and simulation, as well as modeling tools to design, predict, and optimize processes, Chemical engineering classes focus on developing molecular knowledge for chemical process design and improvement. Moving on to salary, the median pay for chemical engineers is a tad bit higher than industrial engineers. However, the projected growth rate between 2020 and 2030 for industrial engineering is way above average at 14%, while chemical engineering should expect to see a growth rate of 9%, which is still above average compared to the overall engineering field of 7%. The number of available industrial engineering jobs is roughly 10 times higher than that of chemical engineering jobs at 292,000 versus 26,300. Finally, the prestige level that comes with industrial engineering and chemical engineering are both 10 out of 10 if I had to give it a score. And you will have no issues finding a job at a big name company regardless of which one you decide to pursue. At the end of the day, the goal is to pick a major that you can build a career out of and most importantly, enjoy doing. There's really no right or wrong answer answer when it comes to choosing industrial or chemical engineering. You might already know that your dream job is to work as an industrial engineer at Tesla to design and optimize their material flow process at their Gigafactory in Nevada. Or you want to work as a chemical engineer to develop a scalable, stable, and cost-effective biosensor chemical manufacturing process at a big medical company. I think knowing what you want already as a student is fantastic. 
but rarely is this the case until you get to work several full-time jobs in industry. If this applies to you, then I strongly recommend going with industrial engineering for its unparalleled versatility, job security, and future prospects. And then if you're that person who finds industrial and chemical engineering to be equally attractive, industrial engineering is for sure the safer option because chemical engineering is very specialized. You can transition into a chemical engineering role by taking several additional classes like separation processes, as well as chemical kinetics and reactor design. All right, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.